Okay, hopefully this is working. I have never done this before. I can't see the chat right now. I don't think there's anyone here anyways. So it doesn't really matter. Um, hi everyone. Hopefully someone joins soon. Uh, this is going to be my first attempt at doing a live video. My name is Laura, by the way. Oh, three people. <laughs> Yay. Um, okay, so I'm not sure if I can see the chat in this mode. I don't really know how that's going to work, but my plan was to kind of start with like a normal podcast, you know, just recording and talking. And then maybe towards the end we can, um, oh, there's my chat. Hi from Michigan. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> So yeah, and then we can um, maybe do some questions and answers later on. Hi, Melanie. Oh, that's so great. I'm so happy that you like your bag. Ah, I'm so happy this is working. Okay, I wasn't sure my internet was going to be fast enough. I tried to record a video, um, was it yesterday? And it was just a disaster. So um, my phone was not agreeing with me. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, Michigan. Um, anyways, my phone was just not working. I was trying to save my video and edit my video and just, uh, it was horrible. So here we are. <laughs> so I'm just winding up some yarn barf here and, uh, just going to wait for a couple more people. Um, and I'm so glad it's working. Hi, Florence. <laughs> This is so great. Um, okay, so let's just get into this. Um, my name is Laura. Hi, everyone. Um, I am coming to you from the west coast of British Columbia, Canada. This is my YouTube channel, and it is called I Heart Knitting. So um, this is where I talk about mostly knitting, um, but as well crafty things and what's going on in my Etsy shop, which is I Heart U. Um, so that's I H E A R T E W E. Um, that's where you're going to find me on Instagram as well. That's my handle there. And then Ravelry, I am I Heart Knitting. Nope, that's not right. <laughs> I am I Heart You Knits on Ravelry. But once this gets uploaded, I will do everything properly and I will give you some links to all my info in the down bar. So yes, welcome to um, my YouTube channel. Hopefully you are excited to be here and I have some winners to talk about today. I have the Halloween Cal winners coming up here um, and as well I have three like runners up. So I have one main prize and I have the three runners up. So our big winner of the Halloween Cal prize that was on Instagram is, I really hope this is going to flip, it might not, Lakeview Chic CA. That is the winner of the main prize. It was really great to see um, an I Heart You bag in the picture from Lakeview Chic as well. So they're the big winner. Um, where is my prize pack here? I'm sending off this yarn. Hedgehog fibers. Beautiful yarn, orangey color. Um, I got this little like notepad here with a little witch on it and I put some stickers inside and then there's some um, soak yuzu. Again, I'm super worried that this is not gonna flip, but um, bear with me, this is my first time. <laughs> so that prize pack is going off to Lakeview Chic. I will get in touch with them on Instagram as well. And then we also had three patterns donated to the contest. And that is from Beatrice from Samba Knits. So um, Beatrice, thank you so much for your donation. Um, so she's donating three prizes. And so the pattern winners are here. So it's Maddie Goreas and um, Karina Lagason and also uh, Antipop111. So they are the pattern winners. And again, I will contact you on Instagram and then you can contact Beatrice from Sam Minutes and she will like pass along that pattern of your choice. So go check out her Ravelry shop. Uh, she has really beautiful patterns. And as well, she has a coupon code, which is good until November 30th. 
and that is for 40% off her shop patterns, which is just amazing. So that coupon code is iHeartKnitting. Oh yes, someone just said it reads right on this side. That's awesome. So um, yeah, so her coupon code is iHeartKnitting, all one word, and that's gonna get you 40% off any of the patterns in Salmonette shops. I would really recommend checking her out um, she just has really beautiful things. We talked about some of her patterns last week and I'm really excited to try one of them out myself. So yeah, so that was our Halloween cal that was on Instagram. So it was a knit along um, through Insta. I still haven't set my Ravelry page up yet, but uh, I'm planning to do that. So maybe the next knit along I will do Insta and Ravelry. So let me know what you think about that. And um, as well, let me know if you have any ideas for what I should do for my next uh, my next knit along whether you know whether if it's too close to do something like Christmas or I don't know just whatever you guys think might be fun you know we can wrap up projects kind of wrapping up the year or we could do like some sort of gift knit along thing or a gift for yourself um, yeah I don't know so let me know what you think about that and we'll start a new knit along soon because uh, that was really great last time, um, like last month, it was just so awesome to see all of your patterns and just all of their different sock projects were amazing and really, really inspiring for me too. So um, definitely want to do that again. And yeah, thank you to everyone who participated. I think there are about like 150 entries. So that was really encouraging for me. And uh, yeah, again, thank you, Beatrice, for donating that pattern. That was so nice of you. So um, yeah, so now that we've got that done, I just want to get right into what I've been working on. I have finished objects here and I basically had like a cast on party on Saturday. And later on, I thought I would show you um, some of my hand knits that I've pulled out because it's getting colder here. So I have a bin of hand knits that we can talk about. So yeah, so finished objects. First of all, I finished my socks for John really happy with these this is self-striping yarn from scrumptious pearl and the color that's probably pretty accurate there the colorway is called double shot and i use nitpick stroll for the heels and toes super happy with these uh, he doesn't like the legs too long on his so um, I think I do about six inches normally for him. And then uh, he has a size 11 foot. So I think these are maybe 11 inches long, something like that. Um, but yeah, he loves them. They had 72 stitches on 2.25 millimeter needles. And uh, yeah, just kind of my regular sock pattern. I did like a one by two rib here for him. And yeah, I'm really happy with how these turned out. Um, glad they're done. <laughs> <laughs> but really happy that those are yeah, finished and then these guys are done as well these are my Halloween socks so um, yeah super happy with these I finished them in time like on the 31st of October so that's pretty awesome they have a sparkle in them I'm not sure if you can see uh, there's a gold Stellina sparkle going all through them and this yarn is by the fawn and the fox and it is the colorway of, uh, what is it, Mojito. And I've had this in my stash for a while. This is Stroll as well for the heels and toes, just like the last sock. And this is in the Cobblestone Heather. Uh, I use that a lot for heels and toes, just a nice contrast gray. Yeah, I really love these. They're, the sparkle is really pretty in real life. There's a lot of gold going through it and uh, yeah, they're just a little different. I go to like a lot of blues, but this is definitely like not quite my normal. Um, yeah, so those are finished. And then I only had like three whips on the go. So I was really happy about that. <laughs> Finishing up some old things and, you know, I'm going to be getting started on some new things now. So Sammy might come in for a visit. Mm, I don't think he can make it in. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so I only had three whips on the go. I have like two sweaters and one pair of socks. So I figured uh, it's time for like a big cast on party. Sammy's down here where you can't really see him. So yeah, Saturday I just hung out and just started a whole bunch of projects, <laughs> like a silly amount of projects. But 
I had a really fun day. I just like cast on everything and got it all going so that, um, you know, now in the evenings I can just sit down and grab one of my project bags and get to work. So just open all these up. Um, so I stole this, um, I didn't steal it. I kind of made a mistake. I boxed the bottom bigger than I normally do on my drawstrings. So you know how it is when you make stuff for yourself. I, uh, I kept my mistake. So this was, um, I actually still have this in the shop. Um, I think I can do two more smaller bags out of this cool Yule fabric. I did like a pre-order this week, which is still available. I've decided to keep that up and then do the final ship out on Monday. So you can check that out. So I got my fun new drawstring bag. Um, I think I just saw a comment, someone asking what I use for my heels. I think they asked what pattern it was. I use the Fish Lips Kiss heel, which is, I think it's like a 99 cent pattern on Ravelry and it's a great um, short row heel, kind of an alternative to some of the other short rows. So this is one of my first projects I started. This is like a basic, the pattern is called the basic Norwegian star hat and it's a free pattern on Ravelry and this yarn is fingering weight both of them are fingering weight but I'm holding them double so the cranberry like kind of darker color I think it's actually called current is by Georgian Bay Fiber Company and yes it's called current this is blowing out a little pink that's probably about right there so it's like this purpley deep color and um, 100% untreated BFL, so blue face luster, and it's 115 grams with 378 yards. So Georgian Bay Fiber Co. I grew up really close to Georgian Bay. Georgian Bay is huge, you know, there's a lot of area, but I grew up really close to Georgian Bay, um, you know, kind of like Simcoe area, if you know that area. So this is kind of special for me. And the white is from Twin Oaks Farm Fiber, and this is their Romney wool. So Laura from Twin Oaks Farm Fiber sent this to me in, I think it was like a Get Your Yarn Wishes granted a couple years ago. And it's really beautiful. And as soon as I got it, I knew that I wanted it to be like a color work with a really simple Norwegian star pattern. So I've just started the Norwegian star in there now. Um, yeah, so I'm doing, I think I'm doing 96 stitches around, maybe a little less than the pattern called for. Yeah, it is. So I took it down to 96 stitches and, uh, yeah, holding the yarn double and we've got, um, four and a half millimeter needles here. So that's cast on number one and then hat number two <laughs> is this one this is the cat love hat and it is by uh, jenny fable and i think it was maybe amanda the crafty jackalope who was knitting this i saw somebody who made it on my feed and i was just like oh, i really like that <laughs> so i couldn't find any like camely colored yarn i really wanted to do it in like a camel like you know brown and then a black but I ended up with this gray instead and uh, yeah super fun I'm just starting the color work you can't really see much at all but I think it's going to be really engaging because as you can see like the chart changes through the whole thing so this is also the 96 stitch size and I think I have four millimeter needles I'm just using basically whatever I can because <laughs> a lot of my needles are in use right now. I have an interchangeable set that uh, I really like from Haya Haya. Yeah, I did mean Simcoe County. Apparently I've been away for too long. <laughs> Simcoe, Ontario is like a totally other place. It's way, way, way south. Um, <laughs> so yeah, anyways, really happy with this. It's in Cascades 220 in like just their gray and their black and yeah, four millimeter needles. And then we've got hat number three. 
which is one we talked about last week, but I've restarted. So this is the Harlow hat. That's the technically the wrong side. And then this is the right side. Um, I'm trying to angle it so you can see the color properly. Yeah, that's pretty good. So this is the Harlow hat by Andrea Mowry. And I started this last week, but I've never done brioche before. So that was like really tough for me. <laughs> Uh, I know like when you're a new knitter you know you don't have that like muscle memory like you do when you've been knitting forever so I think what happened is I just like kept on trying to kind of revert back to like a slipped stitch without doing like the yarn over wrap like you need to do with brioche if you can see here with the brioche um, every single stitch is wrapped slipped and wrapped so it took me a while to get the rhythm of that, but I think I've got it figured out now. I sat down and I did the, the tubular cast on like uh, Andrea calls for in the pattern. I followed her, I'm not having very good focus here. I followed her tutorial on YouTube. It was really straightforward. And um, yeah, I just sat for a while and I was like, okay, <laughs> I can do this. And I think it took maybe an hour you know, of just, just knitting, not watching TV, not doing anything. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyways, that one is restarted. And I think I told you about the yarns last time, but that is the cobblestone Heather from Knit Picks. And then with the Fawn and the Fox yarn, which is um, the Water Lilies colorway which I had left over from another project. So I think I had about 40 grams left and that should be enough. And I decided just to do the smaller size. I think this is um, the smallest size in the pattern. So yeah, Harlow hat by Andrea Mowry and then the cat love hat and then that basic Norwegian star hat. And I also started a pair of socks for John. I think he said he wanted them on this side. Yeah, so I'm doing a um, two by one rib for him here. And I've done 75 stitches. These are my Chiaogu needles, which I haven't used in a while. They're the ones that are bent at the end. And they're actually kind of nice. I'll have to, yeah, they feel good. I don't know, if you don't like change, <laughs> you might not like trying an angled needle like this but if you are willing to try something out um, they're just a little bit different for your ergonomics so I don't know if I would say I prefer them but I definitely don't mind using them so yeah so this is 75 stitches on my bent Xiaogu's 2.25 millimeter and where is my yarn and this yarn is from To The Max Yarn Co it is their Cigarillo it was a sock set. I think I showed this to you maybe the first few episodes. So it had a pink mini with it, but I'm swapping that out for like a green that I found in my stash. It's like an army green sort of. And I think that's going to go really nicely because there is a little bit of that same green in the, in the yarn here. And there's some kind of pinks and purples as well. Yeah, super pretty. So to the Max Yarn Co, they are Canadian. They are out of Alberta. And this is their fingering weight sock. So it's an 80-20. And uh, yeah, oh, it's 115 grams. That's nice. Yeah, so it's 115 grams, 475 yards. Yeah, so I just, just started that. So um, basically just so I have some sock knitting to keep me busy. And then I realized that I have a lot of like dishcloths that I've knit, but I don't have a lot of washcloths, you know, like something you'd like use in the tub. So I thought I'd make like a little set for the bathroom. And uh, I chose this pattern, which <laughs> I don't remember what the pattern is now. I didn't write this down, I'm sorry. So this is 
A free pattern on Ravelry, I think it might have something to do with like a spa day dishcloth or something like that, or washcloth, but it's just a garter stitch and then some stockingette. And then you're going to do garter stitch again for like a little while. So I don't know if I'm going to do them all like this because the garter stitch is kind of boring for me, but um, this is the first one. <laughs> so these are my dishcloth needles. These are these like weird, really, really flexible, short, 4.5 millimeter needles that I got years ago that I just never stopped using. They're always my dishcloth needles. Yeah, they're super flexy. They have weird little like um, weird little tips on them there. Um, but yeah, I just always use them for my dishcloths. It's like the only time I use straight needles. But yeah, something about how they're flexy. They're really nice for knitting the cotton yarn. So yeah, I started this one and just did a few rounds on a rose on that. That is um, like Knit Picks Dishy like a saffron-y kind of yellow colorway. And yeah, I think I showed you these another time. These are my other four colors. So like an aqua and a coral, and then like a charcoal gray and the white, like the creamy white. So yeah, they're gonna all play really nicely together. And our bathroom is currently painted this color. I'm gonna paint it soon, but that'll be a nice pop of color no matter what I end up doing. So I think that's, yeah, that's all for my new cast-ons and my works in progress. I didn't really work on much else this week other than those new cast-ons. So um, here, let me just look at my notes here. Yeah, so um, I have one like stack stash acquisition here. And then um, I also have a coupon code from this yarn dyer as well for you. So really exciting. <laughs> this is my next sweater. This is um, the pink velvet sweater I'm going to knit by Andrea Mowry. And the idea with the pink velvet is you take uh, like a fingering weight yarn and then um, like a mohair and you hold the mohair double just on its own you hold the mohair double and then that is your color work so this will be my main color and then the color work is going to be done in this color so yeah it's this beautiful kind of like currenty purple i know it's not quite <laughs> not quite my colors you know normally i'm going for like teals and blues but i thought i'd do something a little different and I just think oh, it's such a beautiful pattern. I don't know if you've seen it. The pink velvet sweater by Adria Maori. Uh, it's just really delicate and feminine and all the things I'm not. So <laughs> we'll see how it looks on me. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really happy with this yarn. Let me tell you all about the yarn because I've just been showing it to you and teasing you. This is by my friend Janessa from Euphoria Knits. Uh, she is an amazing yarn dyer. She's out of Texas. This is her Frenzy base, which is my favorite sock base that she has. It is an 85 Merino 15% nylon. So I think that's why it feels so darn soft. You know, most sock yarns are either 75 Merino 25 nylon or 80 20. And so, yeah, this one's 85 Merino and 15 nylon and you can totally feel that extra squish factor from that extra merino in there um, it's a really beautiful base this is what i'm knitting my city limit sweater out of currently and i'm really happy with that it's making a really beautiful gauge held double and so i'm really looking forward to trying this color out so that color is called uh, nisus n-i-s-u-s and then this is on her excitement base which is her lace weight. And this is the 70% kid mohair, 30% mulberry silk. Uh, this is a 50 gram hank and it has 460 yards on it. And this is the antique lace colorway. So it's just this really beautiful dusty rose, dusty pink. So pretty. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to make myself finish the city limit sweater first and then i will start this so yeah this just came super happy thank you janessa she also sent a coupon code for us which is awesome so that coupon code is 
I heart you, all one word. U is spelled E-W-E, like my shop. And that's going to get you 25% off and it's good till December 31st. So that's like a crazy good coupon. I'm going to definitely take advantage of that myself. And it's good until the end of the year. So please go check out Janessa's shop, Euphoria Knits. Um, I think we got introduced when she won um, one of my project bags, maybe like a year or two ago. And uh, anyways, love her shop. Really happy that I managed to find her. And yeah, so that's my stack stash acquisition. I don't know why that's so hard to say for me today. And then um, I'm thinking about the holidays and thinking about doing some like Christmas socks for myself and starting them early. So I wanted to get your opinions on this, friends. Let me know which one you think I should cast on, which one is going to be my 2020 holiday socks. So I have two choices here. I have Vivid Yarn Studio. This is the Sleigh Bells colorway. I got this maybe one or two years ago in a holiday update and it has that beautiful space dyed, the gray and like the candy cane here and just this really nice aqua. So there's that one. Or then there's this guy by Freckled Whimsy, which is the peppermint mocha colorway. And this is a self striping. And some of the stripes are solid and then some of them are speckled. So it's really, really beautiful. And uh, I just can't decide. So let me know what you think. They're very different. You know, we're going to get very different sock experiences because we have the self striping and then we have the space dyes, which I could do like a fun little contrasting heel for. I don't know. I can't decide. But I want to start them probably, you know, by the end of this month. So knit both. <laughs> I should just knit both. You're probably right. <laughs> you guys are the worst. <laughs> you're giving me, you're enabling me. That's what you're all doing. You're enabling me. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll stop. Woo. Oh my gosh. I am so sorry. What happened? Oh no. I think I just like super zoomed in. Oh my gosh, you guys, I am so sorry. You do not need to see me that close. Oh shoot. Can I fix this? I can fix this, right friends? Whoa. <laughs> I don't know about this live thing. Okay, it is great, but um, I feel like a hot mess. So thank you for bearing with me. Okay. I think that's all I have to talk about as far as, yeah, all my yarny stuff. Sorry, when my phone did that, I just like got heart palpitations. I'll be fine. So yeah, <laughs> here we go. I have a bin to show you of my knits. It's been getting cold here and I've just been wanting, just been wanting to kind of pull out all my cool weather stuff. And I thought you might want to see what I've made over the years. So I just thought I'd quickly show you some of this. I think I can make you come back up. Yeah, there we go. So this is a hat that I knit recently. I think this is last year. This is the Shepherd Toque. This is by Jane Richmond. It's a cool pattern. She has like three different options uh, for yarn weight. This is a fingering weight yarn. This is Hinterland Yarns, which is a wool alpaca blend. Uh, Hinterland Yarn is located here on the island where I live. So that's super exciting. Uh, I see their alpacas all the time when I'm going for a walk. So it has this nice double brim on it, which is rolled over and sewn on the inside. And it's just a perfect little toque. It's super, super warm, but really, really lightweight. You can just fold it up and throw it right in your pocket. So that's a newer one that I really love. This is a colorway by Sugar Tots. 
I think they're still dying, Sugar Tots Fiber, they're out of Alberta. I think this was called Banania. And this is the reverse snowball fight by um, Plank and Stella. And did a big pom-pom on it. This is a bulky weight. And it's just a great little hat. I don't know if I'm gonna try all of these on for you. And this one is the Elizabeth hat by Jane Richmond. It's beautiful cables. And it has this really big brim that you can either roll up or roll down and wear slouchy. And pom pom's a little saggy, but I'll fix that. And this is knit out of Cascade 220 in just like a dark charcoal colorway. And the pom pom is probably by Cozy Comforts. And I always just like fluff them like that to give them a little bit more volume. And yeah, I've made this a few years ago. It's been really, really great. Something I like is I can wear a slouchy hat. Like if I have my hair pulled back in a ponytail, I can wear a slouchy hat and the pom-pom kind of hides that like bump of my ponytail. So um, I've made a couple like that. This is another one that I did. This is Yarn Ink DK yarn. Um, the colorway is called Shiver and it's like, it's this one. It's in my Soldana as well. Yeah, so this is the Olive and Jack hat. I'm not sure of the pattern name or the pattern designer name, but the pattern is called the Olive and Jack hat. And that was a pattern on Ravelry. Again, just like simple cables. This looks like another Cozy Comforts pom pom. And you can also kind of roll this brim up like that. Yeah, and then um, these mittens I made last year. Beautiful little cabled mittens. I kind of made them to be a pair for these. Um, so this is Patagonia Organic Merino. It's a fingering weight, sport weight. I think I treated it like a sport weight. And this is a Tin Can Knits mitten pattern, which is from their Road Trip book. I can't exactly remember the name now, but yeah, it is from the book called Road Trip by Tin Can Knits. And they're quite thin but really nice and cozy. Yeah, really like these ones. I made them last year. Um, I wear these fingerless gloves a lot too. This is um, a Jane Richmond pattern. It's the Spate Mittens. And I think the book that this is from is called um, Island. And they're just a really nice, they have this really cool rib pattern that opens up when you put them on. And these are folded down, but you can roll them up for some extra warmth. So these are awesome for the West Coast. Yeah, so I wear these a lot. This is some sort of merino worsted weight. It's probably like Madeline Tosh or something like that. And then um, here's, some, oh, these are pretty. These are some color work mittens I did quite a few years ago now. John brought me this contrasting color yarn. It's like a single ply, really bright, colorful merino. And some sort of just sock yarn for the, like gray sock yarn for the contrast. And let me put these on. And they have like little solid hearts. You can tell these are really well loved. And uh, yeah, really, really like these. Super pretty. A lot of these are dirty <laughs> because I wear them a lot or worn, you know, but that's just proof that, you know, these have been well used. This is another pair. These are from a long, long time ago. They're called the Squirrely Swedish Mitts. And uh, I think this color, this dark green is actually what I'm using in John socks. Yeah, I got uh, one or two other things. Okay, I just want to show you a couple more things. These are little boot warmers, super fun. You just put them like on top of your boots. It makes it look like you're wearing big thick socks without having to wear big thick socks. But I want to show you these because I knit these a super long time ago. I think these are called Charming Mittens and they're a free pattern. They came up on Ravelry. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because this yarn is Debbie Bliss Cashmerino Erin. And these mittens are probably like 
12 years old. So I'm just really amazed with how well they've held up. Just really simple. So I'm pretty sure these are called Charming. And then the same pattern designer has, like these were designed to be kind of more a masculine version called Dashing. And they were meant to be longer than this. They were meant to be, you know, probably double the length, but I made these for John and he didn't want them very long. So I just left them like this, the little cable. These are quite old as well. These are the Tacky Yarns Donegal Tweed that I used for, they're big on me, but that I used for my Central Park hoodie, which I was wearing on the last episode. And yeah, he got a lot of use out of these. So yeah, I thought you might just want to see some of these kind of knits from over the years. And yeah, definitely like into the grays now, like just for day to day, I would say these three, like these mittens, this hat, and this get the most play. This hat gets the second most play. And then the other ones, I just pull it when I'm having fun. <laughs> so I think that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. Um, I would like to see some questions. If you have some questions now, I can't like, I couldn't read before I was getting all distracted, but if you have any questions that you have for me now, I'm going to take just a few minutes. Um, I'm not going to do an Etsy shop um, rundown this week. There's, I think there's about four bucket bags left from the holiday update. There's a few large size bags. And then I do have that holiday pre-order still in. So if you are interested in checking out the shop, please go have a look. It's my Etsy shop. It's called I Heart You. And yeah, I made a bunch of lavender sachets this week. So there's some with like kind of holiday theme and some without holiday theme. And um, yeah, I think I mentioned the pre-order already where you can pre-order the smaller sizes. So that way, you know, you get to pick whether you want the sock size in the rectangular or in the square and then like the drawstring or uh, the zipper for the medium size. So yeah, I'm going to leave that pre-order up until probably Sunday. And then everything's going to ship out on Monday. So we'll just see how the weekend goes. But please get your orders in soon. Um, it's really, really, um, it's going to be a busy, busy season this year. So um, if you, yeah, if you want something, <laughs> please get it soon. And um, if you are concerned, there are upgrades so when you're checking out, you're not going to necessarily get tracking with your standard shipping. Uh, if you're in the States, you're pretty much never going to get tracking. If you're in Canada, it's only if your order is like a certain size that I'm going to give a tracking number. So um, there is a tracking upgrade in the shop. So you can be guaranteed to get a tracking number. Um, that way you won't have quite so much Christmas stress, hopefully. So... Um, yeah, I do free shipping, like I do the standard shipping that isn't tracked so that I can give you free shipping so that I can afford to give you free shipping. So, um, yeah, you know, hopefully that's not a concern. Um, oh, my top three yarn sources. That's a really good question. So Cecile just said, what are your top three yarn sources? Canadian. Okay, <laughs> that's great. I order a lot from Canada just because of our dollar. We all know how that is. So um, my local yarn shop is, um, well, there's two actually, three. So there's Beehive Wool in Victoria, which is amazing. So I'm on the Gulf Islands here, which is close to Victoria. That's like, you know, if I'm going to go somewhere, I'm not going to go to Vancouver. I'm going to go to Vancouver Island because it's closer for me. So Beehive Wool in Victoria, I believe they do online now. Um, they're a great shop. Um, my other local yarn shop is Naughty by Nature, which is out of Victoria. I think they are working on going online as well. So if you're not local, I would definitely recommend checking out them. They're more geared towards fiber arts, say spinning and weaving and that sort of thing. Um, but they're an amazing shop. Ryan and Stephanie run that and uh, just can't say enough good things about Naughty by Nature. Uh, and then my other um, local yarn shop would be in Sydney. It's called In Sheep's Clothing. And to be honest, I don't go to that one quite as often. So, 
yeah, so those are my local yarn shops. And then I, um, I order a lot from Canadian indie dyers. So some of my favorite, um, she's not dying a ton right now, but Lara from the Farn and the Fox. Um, I just discovered a new dyer called Brian Dye Works recently that's doing really beautiful stuff. Leo and Roxy Yarn Co. Um, who else? Yarn Ink, Flock Fiber, um, Vivid Yarn Studios. And then there's, um, I'm trying to think of what their name is. I just found them recently on Instagram. I think it's like West Coast Wolves or something like that. So, yeah. Um, those are all great shops and uh, yeah I go from you know for a lot of different indie dyers and then like what I'm trying to do now is just really project-based purchases so I make a plan and then I purchase but yeah I try and support Canadian as much as I can and then also try and support my indie dyers as well um, but again like there's tons of farms as well Twin Oaks Farm Fiber that I mentioned and um, you know, hinterland yarns. Um, <laughs> I will definitely put some show notes down for you. Um, yeah. So yeah, if anyone else has any questions, they take a minute or two to pop up on the screen, but I, uh, I will answer one or two before I go here. I'm having some coffee today. This is my David's tea mug, which I really love. It's got that gold speckle on it. And I'm drinking Fernwood Coffee, which is local to me. They're from Victoria. They're an organic fair trade coffee roasters. Really delicious. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm not seeing a lot of questions come up. Um, that's okay. <laughs> um, we're already at 40 minutes here, so I think I'm ready to sign off anyways. But um, Celia, thank you for asking that question about yarn sources. That's an awesome um thing to answer so um oh and one more question here is brioche like carrying colors and color work okay so brioche is creating like a totally different fabric so you're doing kind of like yarn overs and then you can see with this two color brioche um it's reversible and it's really unlike a knit fabric in any way like it's it's maybe the closest thing would be like a ribbed fabric but um you you it's really hard to see you're yarn overing every time and then kind of slipping that other color forward or behind and it makes this really really stretchy reversible fabric um andrea maori has a really good tutorial and i'm sure a lot of other people do too so yes brioche yeah you'll get into it i promise so, um, okay, thank you. I just want to say thank you for joining me. Uh, this was interesting. <laughs> I think I think I can manage this, um, you know, going forward. And I hope you like the live format. I will probably be a little less squirrely next time. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to say again, thanks everybody for joining. Um, it's so exciting to be able to share what I'm doing and have, um, you know, have some friends to chat with and I've been really enjoying your comments um, the comments last week were really great on um, how you were learning to knit who taught you how to knit so um, thanks so much everybody oh thank you Pamela that's really nice of you for saying take care bye everyone